sport is the universal language. And what a beautiful place to be reminded of the words of the late Nelson Mandela when he said, sport has the power to change the world. Sport speaks to people in a language they understand. Sport laughs in the face of all forms of discrimination. And sport provides hope where once there was despair. Tonight, we celebrate sport, pure and simple. Pure and simple. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2019 Canadian Paralympic Hall of Fame Induction Gala. Bienvenue au Gala de Intronisation au Temple de la Renommée Paralympique Canadienne 2019. We would like to begin tonight by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations people. My name, as you might know, is Scott Russell, and I'm very proud to be I'm proud to be here tonight, but I'm proud to be here representing the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. We are the host broadcaster of the Paralympic Games in Canada. You know, it's been tremendous to work on the Games from the position of host back in Canada, in our beautiful country, but more importantly to me, in the game city. And I hosted in the game city in Beijing in 2008, and more recently in 2018 in Pyeongchang, South Korea. That's the important thing, to be with the athletes on the ground. It's a tremendous experience, and that experience aids in the effort to help bring the stories of those athletes back home. And that, to me, is so important. The stories of the men and women who wear the maple leaf in international competition in such an important part of our cultural narrative. And that narrative is sport. People like Lauren Wollstonecroft, people like Stephanie Dixon, like Chantal Petitclerc, like Andre Vigier, Jeff Adams, and the people that we celebrate this evening in this beautiful place, all of them are so important to the story of sport in our country. I'm honored to be your MC this evening, as I said, and to be in the company of so many great sport leaders, Paralympians, and champions. The Canadian Paralympic Hall of Fame celebrates remarkable individuals who have made significant impacts on the development of Paralympic sport in Canada and internationally. To look at the list of past inductees is really to see the history of Paralympic sport in this country and a roadmap to how it has evolved over time from the de dedication of the builders to growing the para-sport system, to the coaches who have innovated and worked tirelessly to give their athletes the best opportunities and environments to succeed, and to the athletes who put in the work each and every day to be the best that they can possibly be and who have brilliantly inspired and excited and represented Canadians with their wonderful, fantastic landmark performances. The Paralympic movement would not be where it is today, which is in a period of strength and growth, without all of these individuals, the athletes, the coaches, and the builders alike. Cette grâce et ces athlètes, entraîneurs et baptiseurs, que le mouvement paralympique au Canada a connu une forte croissance 
et est une force mondiale. A new class is inducted into the Hall of Fame every two years, and the class of 2019 is truly special, as we'll find out this evening. Before we get started, we'd like to acknowledge some special guests that we have with us here this evening. First of all, we have a number of our Canadian Paralympic Committee corporate partners and donors in the room. Please give our partners and donors a hand because they make it possible. I can't tell you how grateful we are for your support of the Paralympic movement and of sport of this kind. And thank you for taking the time to join us here this evening. We also have a number of Paralympians and members of the Hall of Fame with us, and they deserve your recognition because they're national treasures. Our Paralympians and our Hall of Famers. All of them are such important members of our community, and your commitment, those athletes and those Hall of Famers, your passion is so appreciated. And of course, we have our seven phenomenal inductees that make up the class of 2019. You're going to get a chance to celebrate them throughout the evening, but let's get started with a hand for our class of 2019. Thank you for being here to the class and for being such amazing ambassadors for Canada and for sport in general. Merci de votre présence ici ce soir et merci d'être de grands ambassadeurs du Canada et du sport paralympique. We'll start with the official induction shortly, but first, I'd like you to be welcome to eat your first course of the meal. Because as we all know, nights like this, although storied and full of treasured memories, need fuel to keep you going. Have a great first course, and we will see you after salad. Thank you. Welcome back, and I hope everybody has enjoyed their first course. How about a hand for the folks here? who provide us with the meal. It's now time for the fun to begin this evening as we begin our induction, the class of 2019 to the Canadian Paralympic Hall of Fame. Que la fête commence avec notre première intronisation de la soirée. To start, I would like to welcome our presenters to the stage to help with our first induction. And those presenters are, if they could come up to the stage, Canadian Paralympic Committee President Marc-André Fabien and Kim Penfold of CPC Premier Partner, Petro-Canada. And as they join me on stage, let's turn our attention to the screens to find out more about Coach Joe Ray. 20 years ago, Joe Ray of Prince George, British Columbia, is one of Canada's top cash spiel curlers. But then comes a totally new challenge, adapting the sport to persons with a disability, while preserving the excitement, the strategy, and the pride. He's arguably, uh, you know, kind of one of the founding fathers, if you will, and there were only a few people that really you know, got involved in wheelchair curling at the early stages and then, you know, cha championed the cause at every opportunity. I would say his legacy is not only in success, but the growth of the sport and, uh, and being a pioneer in, in terms of how the game was played. Developing a new sport takes vision, commitment, and a lot of trial and error. Joe's task is to balance the laws of physics with the physical abilities of a competitor in a wheelchair. And his solutions are ingenious. Joe was very innovative. He developed a lot of the early techniques that we had to, to work on to allow 
uh, this group of athletes to enjoy success. He was always tinkering and always trying to find a way to make each athlete be the best they could be. In 2006 at Torino, Italy, Joe's vision turns to gold when he serves as head coach of Canada's championship ring. In Vancouver, Joe three-peats with Paralympic gold, adding them to three world championships. He might say um, that the Vancouver Games, the home games, was extremely special due to the support um, that we had from Canadians coast to coast. This was certainly the largest venue and the largest number of people our athletes had ever competed in front of. So it was, uh, it was very special. An extraordinary career as a coach, as an innovator, earning well-deserved recognition as a pioneer and a pathfinder with the biggest heart in the house. He was invested in each of the athletes. He was invested in the program, and so it mattered to him. He wanted each and every one of them to be successful on the ice, so he was there to help them figure it out. He'll never be forgotten in the wheelchair curling community. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, mesdames et messieurs, please welcome, direct from his home in beautiful Prince George, British Columbia, Coach Joe Ray, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Joe, congratulations. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mark Andre for this uh, wonderful evening and all the planning that they've done for this, and um, and just uh, you know highlighting uh, our sport, wheelchair curling, and uh, giving us an opportunity to uh, to showcase this and uh, and uh, and meet all you people. Um, we all know that uh, uh, that none of us enjoy these accomplishments without a tremendous amount of support. And my support became, uh, came from at home and my family. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> I have a very supported wife, and uh, she always held things together while I traveled with our team. Um, if you read my bio, <laughs> This will get done with here, in it? <laughs> if you read my bio, you're going to know just how big of a job that was. We had a lot of kids at our house, a lot of kids. And, uh, and at all that, during, during that time, she was, uh, she was going to university and uh, becoming a nurse. So uh, she was a very, very busy girl. We also had Grandma Sue to our kids, and uh, she used to show up uh, and rescue us on many occasions, and I sure thank her for that. Um, I had great uh, coaching opportunities, as you saw in the uh, video, uh, uh, Jerry Peckham as well, Elaine Dag Jackson that's here to, uh, to help me celebrate tonight. And uh, they, uh, they gave me opportunities that, uh, that uh, none of, no one else could, and I really, really appreciate that. I was lucky enough to work with a wonderful coaching staff of Wendy Morgan and Laura Fairs, and you would have said, seen Wendy up there. She, uh, she said some nice words tonight and uh, Laura, who was our mental trainer, and, uh, and they should be standing here next to me because they, they deserve this as much as I do. Um, and let's be honest, uh, I didn't, uh, if I didn't have great athletes to work with, none of this would have happened. And uh, I have two of them here tonight uh, helping me celebrate, Ina and Sonia, and they, Sonia went to every Paralympic with me, and, uh, and Ina was right along there as well. So multiple gold medal winners there. Being part of uh, Parasport has uh, not only been rewarding, but also uh, a learning experience for me. 
Wheelchair curling was a brand new sport to Canada and uh, when we attended the World Championships in 2005. It seemed that everybody knew more about the sport than we did. We had some catching up to do. And as a high performance uh, curling coach and player at that time, I, I thought I was pretty confident about how the game should be played. But it didn't take very long to know uh, that, uh, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes, right? <laughs> yeah. It didn't take very long to, uh, to realize this game needed to be played a little bit different as it was much more difficult than able-bodied curling. Uh, there was no sweeping. And in the words of one of our friends uh, uh, and fellow uh, wheelchair curlers, um, he was asked, uh, how is it not having any sweeping? And he replied, sweeping admits imperfection. <laughs> and that pretty much sums it up for this group that I work with. I'll tell you, they're an awesome bunch of people. My players taught me more about the ability to overcome any adversity than they'll, than they'll ever know. Their grit, determination, sportsmanship is second to none. All of our Canadian teams showed quiet confidence and never gave up a, a, and a never give up attitude that made them the very best in the world for, very many, or for many years. I can honestly say I was never any more proud to wear the maple leaf alongside of our Canadian team. We were so lucky to, uh, to watch our flag raised and our anthem sung at many competitions, and that moment never gets old. Thank you all for coming to share this moment with me tonight, and I'm very grateful. Thank you. Great speech, Joe, and you even survived almost getting played off there. That was fantastic. But congratulations sincerely on all the work that you have done over the years, Joe, in building champions of this sport and Canadian champions on the international stage. It's been wonderful to watch and to see the support of all Canadians for what you do uh, for Paralympic sport in this country and around the world. I would now like to welcome to the stage past Canadian Paralympic Committee President and Hall of Fame member who I checked into the hotel with today, Patrick Jarvis, as well as Helen Bachelani of CPC Premier Partner Pfizer to help celebrate our next inductee. So come on up, the two of you. Our next inductee has dedicated her life's work to providing more people with disabilities the chance to try sport, to make sport a regular part of their lives, and to compete in sport at a high level. Please watch the screens to learn more about wheelchair sport leader and builder, Kathy Newman. She's passionate. She just gives. She gives and gives and gives. She has incredible energy and enthusiasm. You would never just meet Kathy and think that she'd change the world, um, but she has. She has been essential to Paralympic sport. Nearly 40 years ago, Kathy Newman is serving as the volunteer president of a track and field club in Langley, BC. She meets and is inspired by athletes with a disability and motivated by their challenges. She accepts a job with the BC Wheelchair Sports Association. Neither she nor the world of wheelchair sports will ever be the same. If I have to think of one thing that has made a significant difference, I would say it's with BC Wheelchair Sports. Kathy is always looking at something else that we can do to promote awareness or provide opportunities for athletes. It's never about ego. It's never about accolade. It's always about how do we improve the system? How do we do the right thing for the athletes, um, for the people that are involved? Um, it's entirely selfless. Kathy immerses herself in a never-ending cycle of funding appeals, event bids, strategic planning, and organizational meetings, building a firm Canadian foundation for a burgeoning global movement. In 2004, she helps to inaugurate the Canada Cup of Wheelchair Rugby. In 2010, she and her team bring the World Wheelchair Rugby Championships to Vancouver, drawing 14,000 fans to six days of intense competition. She thinks outside the box, so it's not that she sort of does everything day in and day out the same way. It's always, you know, how could we do this differently? How could we do this better? I admire the fact that after almost 40 years, 
She is still incredibly curious, incredibly dedicated and committed to the movement. She continues to seek out new challenges. She continues to learn. She is also instrumental in establishing Bridging the Gap, a program that has helped thousands of persons with a disability find motivation, inspiration, independence, and confidence through sport. The same inspiration, confidence, and courage that Kathy Newman discovered on a track in Langley nearly 40 years ago. I would like to say what an effective, strong, fantastic leader that she's been. She's made a difference to Paralympic sport and to athletes around the world, and she's been a great friend. When she retired, we had a picture taken of all of the staff and all of the key people and all of the board members over the years that have had the honor to serve with Kathy. And it was a, an enormous group of people that had come to celebrate her. And that's her legacy. All of the people that she's affected over the years. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, she is a fantastic leader, and she's got more pairs of glasses than anybody in the history of sport. Kathy Newman, right there. It's pretty funny to look at them over the years, for sure. I must admit, uh, I feel like I'm just going to pitch over here. I'm so excited and honored to be here to receive this award, and I feel quite overwhelmed. First, I want to congratulate my fellow inductees tonight. You folks are all amazing people. I was reflecting on what I would say tonight, and recently I was interviewed on the radio and was asked what I wanted to see happen in the future of the Paralympic movement. What came to mind was the need for us to continue to shine the light on Parasport. While we have come a long way, since we first began in the 1940s, yes, 1940s, we have much more to do. I feel fortunate to have been involved in developing innovative programs and events, allowing us to increase participation, build strong partnerships, and increase awareness. However, I continue to be impressed with so many creative programming ideas like the Wheelchair Rugby Canada club, program, club Podium Program, supporting club development around the provinces. The BC Wheelchair Basketball WOW and Ontario Parasport Gear Programs, providing girls and women's only wheelchair basketball, or basketball programming championships. I got events on the brain. In a supportive and encouraging environment and the successful Canadian Paralympic Foundation, Paratough Cup, raising funds to support growth and development of Parasport across Canada. I'm also passionate about event hosting. Recognizing events provides a huge opportunity to, to achieve so many of our goals. As I often say, major events give us a reason to talk to people. People like sponsors, community partners, the local, provincial, and federal governments, and so many more. It also provides a platform to engage the public as spectators and promote awareness. I'm excited about Wheelchair Rugby Canada's bid to host the 2020 International Wheelchair Rugby Federation Paralympic Qualification Tournament, and Wheelchair Basketball Canada's bid to host the 2022 World's men's and women's wheelchair basketball championships. And I wish both organizations well as in their bids as I know it will help them achieve so much more. It's initiatives like these innovative programs and event hosting strategies that will continue to allow us to shine that light on the para-sport movement, encouraging increased participation, supporting growth and development across the country. All of this could not be achieved without the support of so many people. So, thank you to all the sponsors and government funders who get behind these events and programs. Thank you to all the volunteers who make it happen. 
Thank you to all the administrators who keep us all on track. Thank you to the spectators who attend the events. And a special thank you to the officials, coaches, sports science personnel, and other team staff who support the athletes. Our purpose is to support athletes in achieving their dreams. Whether it's becoming physically active for the first time and trying something new they never thought possible, or participating in a local community sport program, or striving to be on the Provincial Canada Games team, or reaching for the stars and becoming a Paralympian. On a personal note, I'd like to thank my family and friends for being so supportive of my involvement in Parasport. Thank you to my amazing friends Gail and Laurel for all the kind words you said there on the video. And a special thank you to Kathy Cadu and Wheelchair Rugby Canada for nominating me for this award. I am grateful for being part of the movement. And as my good friend Donald Roy would say, it has been my pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Such a lasting impact and continuing impact on Paris sport in the country and internationally. Congratulations, a wonderful honor for you and your family tonight. Uh, both Joe and Kathy are incredible examples of how strong coaches and administrators and how strong they are and how critical they are to the growth of Paralympic sport in Canada and how good people, just plain good people, can make a difference to so many lives. I hope everybody is enjoying the celebration so far. Uh, I'm sure you're getting hungry because the salad was just a teaser. So we're going to take a break for the main course and then we'll continue with five more inductions after you gobble it all up. So, bon appetit. Welcome back as we continue with our uh, wonderful evening and inductions at the Canadian Paralympic Hall of Fame. How about a hand for the folks here at the Marriott who've been working so hard to get food on the table. Thank you. Tonight at our induction ceremony, as we celebrate the class of 2019, we have five remarkably accomplished athletes to celebrate. All of them have been tremendous role models, both on and off the fields of play. To begin, I'd like to welcome our next presenters to the stage. Vice President of the Canadian Paralympic Committee, Gail Hamamoto, and Serge Corbet of Air Canada, an official partner of CPC. Please welcome Gail and Serge. Known for his speed and precision in competition and daredevil innovation out of competition, our next inductee, we all know, is one of a kind. Please turn your attention to the screens to hear more about Vernon, British Columbia's own Josh Dueck. A young man lies in a hospital bed, broken but unbeaten. He is 23, a fearless mogul skier born to bound down the most punishing slopes of a British Columbia winter. I think that the combination of his wife and sport probably saved his life. From the stories that he's told me, uh, lived life fully and, and was maybe not headed down the best path. And I think that Paralympics gave him a focus from that moment that he broke his back and that kept him between the lines to achieving some goals. I think Josh was destined to do big things no matter what had happened. And I really believe he'd say the same thing, that this accident wasn't so much as a setback as a new platform to be who he is and continue to be authentic in different ways. It takes him five years to get back to world-class competition. Five years of intensive focus, effort, and courage. In 2010, Josh wins a silver medal in the sitting slalom at the Vancouver Paralympic Games. 
and gold in monocross at the X Games a year later. Sport was an avenue and an outlet for him as a young kid growing up in a small town to sort of seek things outside of the small town and it became a vehicle for him after his accident to tell his story and define more of who he is. Now he believes that he is ready to try the backflip. In February 2012, after three months of practice on an airbag, mastering the physics of the flight, he does it. There's no way he was gonna say no when that backflip opportunity came up. Nobody had ever done it before. And so there was an immense uh, unknown um, and he trudged through and was determined to get there. Two years later, Josh Duet crowns his Paralympic career with silver and gold medals at Sochi. When his teammates ask him to carry the Canadian flag in the closing ceremony, his recovery is complete. He's such a visionary and he has such great uh, insight for what is possible. I think he touches people more than he probably believes that he does, but he really shows that there's no limits. For Josh Duex, sport is a dress rehearsal, the place where all of us can engineer our destiny with power, possibility, and passion. Ladies and gentlemen, he skis at Silver Star, but he's our Golden Star, Josh Duek. Thanks, Scott. Uh, in, in classic fashion, I've prepared very little for today, so I can see they've given me a 10-minute counter, uh, opposed to the three-minute earlier, so let's see what I can do. <clears throat> um, I, I would say that I, I come to the, the stage and I, I come to you today um, with a humble heart, but also with mixed emotion. Um, I don't know how else to put this, and it sits heavy um, uh, all over, and I, I feel like the reason that I, I'm feeling this right now with you, and I want you guys to know how much I appreciate each and every one of you, because like, I came in today, and, and I've, I've been reconnecting and just feeling the joy of so many friendships and so many people that have elevated not just myself, but the sport and the community at large. And I say that I come in here with mixed emotion, and, and I really, um, when I first got the call, I was like, no kidding, that's amazing, and then I just went right back to work. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to land a job in the sports sector doing something that I really care about. And uh, as, as I was, Matt, thank you so much for saying what you've said and for being one of the best teammates a guy could ever hope for and for nominating me today. Um, yeah, 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 to the team, to the team. I've been fortunate to, to dive back into the sports sector and put that same enthusiasm and passion into leadership behind the scenes and helping to elevate the platform for other kids to be involved in sport. So I feel honored beyond measure to, to be in that role. But I say that I come with mixed emotions because it's not only work that takes my time, it's, it's, uh, and it's not even taking my time, it's where I get to give my time. Uh, I've got my beautiful wife who's hanging here right now, Lacey, and uh, if you know her, you know why I've been successful. We got two beautiful kids, and uh, Nova being six, Hudson being three, they definitely take a lot of energy. We're in the thick of it right now, and, and what a wonderful blessing to be able to have family and to grow together and to be able to share with them the experiences and values in sport. And I suppose the big, the big loom for me and the mixed emotion comes from, um, we, we can't do this without a team, and we know that. Uh, it takes many, it takes a village to raise an athlete, uh, and our most important network, the people that matter most to us are often the closest. And, and sometimes you fail to realize how important the roles they've played in your life until they're no longer there. And I ask you to join me for just one moment. And it, I invite you, if you want, you can close your eyes and, and just find a moment of stillness to remember those that came before us 
and those that are no longer with us. You may feel sadness that those, those people that have helped shape who you are are no longer here. Uh, you may feel some joy for the role that they've played in shaping who you are. And, and for me and for my entire family, we, we were given an opportunity in very short notice and very short order to say goodbye to my dad, Peter, and my mom, Vicky, um, this past year. And uh, so my life has been upside down in more than one way. And uh, I, I want to, to recognize my mom and dad for all the great things that they did to create a strong, willful, determined, rarely but sometimes even kind uh, young man. Uh, I say rarely because my mom was the epitome of kindness. Um, and, uh, and I get to look to their strengths and their virtues and how they gave everything to raise their family. I look back and I kind of think, hey, five years has gone on since I was last in the gate, since I got to play, since I got to play games and uh, rally down the mountain doing what I love to do. And, and that's why I think a big component to the success that our whole team had was because we enjoyed it. And that joy came from excellent leadership, like Brianne, who is the director of our program, and my coach, uh, JS. Um, teammates like Matt, um, the community and the family that hold us to do it. And I reflect upon those times because life can be hard. Life can knock you down. You know that. It's happened to each and every one of us in this room. We get knocked down and sometimes we feel it's unfair and we don't understand really what's going on. And when I look back on my sport career, I am so thankful beyond any measure that it developed the tools and the skills and the experience to not only negotiate and manage this life that we live in that can be crazy and awesome, but it also gives us the skills to appreciate it and to thrive within it and to rise above it. And, and, and each and every one of you are very instrumental either as athletes, players, builders, supporters, partners. Air Canada, thanks for putting me on every elevator and on side a few airplanes. Like, it was, it was kind of awkward for me showing up at the airport and like, you, I know you. I'm like, eh. Um, <laughs> but what you did and what Air Canada did and our partners did is they elevated our sport. They created an awareness of the human spirit. And now more than ever, we need that reminder because times are tough. The world is changing. Of course, it does every day and it does every generation. It's nothing new. But I think... Um, the role that we play in the Paralympic community is irreplaceable and needed now more than ever. And uh, I would love to, to go on and on and thank each and every person along the way. So I'll just say this, thanks to each and every one of you that is here today, that's not here in person and that's no longer with us at all. Um, it, it, it takes the collective to get to where we go. And I challenge you to this. Um, I heard some great wisdom at a fundraiser not that long ago, uh, is that we are a product of the five people we spend the most time with. So I encourage you to audit that and ask yourself, who are you spending time with and why? And do you elevate them and do they elevate you? Because life is short, you might as well rise. Thank you. Well, congratulations, Josh. And I just, uh, on a personal note, want to say, Congratulations to you, and thank you so much. Uh, it was a thrill to watch Josh compete, and I, I've seen him firsthand compete. But it's also been a thrill for me to be able to work with Josh in a professional capacity uh, because he was my broadcast partner at the Pyeongchang Paralympic Winter Games along with the wonderful Lauren Wollstonecroft. And uh, I would lag behind at breakfast every day and, you know, make sure I got my bacon and eggs and was ready to go for the day. Meantime, Lorne and Josh were already out on the ski hills getting stuff done. You are fantastic, Josh. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next presenters, and they're great ones, I would like to welcome to the stage past CPC President and member of the Hall of Fame, the Honorable Carla Qualtro, as well as 
Loring Finney from CPT official partner Bell Canada. Come on up, Carla and Loring. Our next inductee will forever be in the history books as the first Canadian to win a gold medal at both the Summer and Winter Paralympic Games in goalball and para-alpine skiing. Let's watch the screens to learn more about the remarkable career of Vivien Faure. Vivien Faure is four years old when an Olympic broadcast awakens a powerful desire. She promises her grandfather that someday she will become a champion. As the years go by, the range of Vivian Ferre's vision narrows, but the scope of her dreams expand, thanks to the power of sport. Vivian excels as an athlete. She's a natural athlete, someone who is good at sport since she's been four years old. She can do things on the ground, on ice, in the water, and she could probably do really good things in the air too. In 2000, she's a Paralympic gold ball champion in Sydney and then again in Athens four years later. But a concussion forces Vivian off the national team. She is undaunted and returns to competition as a downhill skier, embracing the winter and a new start. It was really neat to see this person who's an incredible athlete and a really good skier make it like she did it. She kind of transitioned and she figured out ski racing and she figured out how to do it and go really, really fast. In 2009, she wins the first of five Crystal Globes on the World Cup circuit, skiing so skillfully and so fearlessly that few guides are fast enough to pace her. She's just all muscle and all intensity all the time. She really does exemplify what an, a high-performance athlete is. She has a, a plan, a vision, a goal, and she does it. And she's not gonna tell anybody about it, but she is gonna get that goal done in an excellent way. In 2010, at the Paralympic Games in Vancouver, Vivian Ferre will earn her greatest triumph and endure her most painful fall. After winning medals in the slalom and giant slalom, Vivian stands at the start of the women's downhill, despite having suffered an excruciating groin injury. She is determined to compete, determined to win. Led by guide Lindsay Dubu, she finishes the course in gold medal time, but her injured leg crumples at the finish line, sending her tumbling into the barrier. She breaks her wrist and suffers another concussion. Despite the pain, and with her wrist in a cast, Vivian returns to win two more medals and a place in Canadian sports history. When Vivian was injured in Vancouver and she kept going to win more races and compete, it really speaks to her tenaciousness and her drive. That, to me, epitomizes Viv completely. Like, broken wrist, okay, well, whatever, keep going. She had no fear. She just went for it. For everyone who is faced by a serious challenge, Vivian Ferre's advice is simply this. Surround yourself with people who believe in you and just win. Well, I have to say a big thank you. It's very humble for me to, to be here. As uh, Josh said, it's quite of a mixed feeling. Uh, sport has been all my life. It's my passion. Um, I cannot dream of a better career. I did see so many places in the world. I met amazing people. And I've been touched by a lot of people that did very good for me. Um, I hope that sport could bring so many pleasure and, and good feeling to a lot of young people. Um, it brings like sense of family, uh, engagement, responsibility, respect, uh, to play fair as well. And sport, it's kind of uh, important to be, to be clean. So it's all the, the great value that Paralympic and the sport could bring to uh, someone. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so.
So yes, uh, concussion are not easy, so uh, I'm quite struggling with the light and everything. So <laughs> I'll say thank you again, and thanks for being here and supporting the sport and Paralympian. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Absolutely beautiful, that's what sport is all about. Vivien Faure, ladies and gentlemen, the latest member of the Canadian Paralympic Hall of Fame. Wonderful. And now, please welcome our next presenters to the stage. Past Vice President of the Paralympic Foundation of Canada, Ellen Waxman, as well as Vicky Gould from Canadian Tire, a premier partner of the Canadian Paralympic Committee. Please welcome Ellen and Vicky. One of the best wheelchair basketball players that the country has ever known, our next inductee was a force on the national team for nearly 20 years. Let's turn to the screens now to find out more about Joey Johnson's remarkable career. For 17 years, at five Paralympic Games and four World Championships, Winnipeg's Joey Johnson wears the maple leaf with pride. Winning gold in Sydney, repeating four years later in Athens, and then crowning his Team Canada career with a third gold in London. Joey is, you know, one of the handful of best players to ever play. And in my opinion, um, maybe the greatest defensive player to ever play the game. There's a way to watch a game, and there's a way that Joey Johnson sees the game. He saw the plays come in like three or four plays uh, ahead. He's the only player that I was ever intimidated by. Um, and that's not so much because of his size, although that was something certainly that could be intimidating, but it was his mind. It was He was the one guy who I just felt like knew what I was going to do before I knew what I was going to do. One time he chased after a guy to block a layup, and he actually never stopped his chair and just ran into the, the pole of the basket and just backed up the whole basket system about six, seven feet. Our longtime assistant coach, Paul Bowes, used to call Joey the bull moose and glass slippers. He could show you the bull moose uh, if he needed to and wanted to, but the way he could move his chair, it was, there's nobody who's ever been that big and that nimble. Joey doesn't talk that much, but when he did, people would listen. He had this way to impose his will on the game. Quiet confidence. You know, rarely boastful. Rarely boastful. If you play against him, get out of the way. <laughs> if you play with him, you'll be a great person. He belongs in any and every Hall of Fame that, uh, that, that's out there related to basketball and wheelchair basketball. He's just uh, an all-time great. Today, he is giving back to the sport that opened his door to a world of acceptance, athleticism, and acclaim as an assistant coach for Team Canada in its global quest for gold, helping the next generation take on life's greatest challenges one on one. If he can intimidate Patrick Anderson, you know he's got to be good. Joey Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to keep this nice and short because I heard we're getting dessert after I'm done. So, um, as, as everyone else has said, this is truly a very humbling experience and, and such an honor to be up here. Uh, I can't believe that my career is gone like that, and here I am getting inducted to the Hall of Fame, so I, I really do appreciate this. Um, I, I would like to start off by thanking kind of where my roots started, and that's with the Manitoba Wheelchair Sports Association. Uh, they ran some great programs back in the early to mid 80s when I was starting off, and, and that's how I got in, introduced to uh, adaptive sport and parasport. But two people in particular, uh, really stood out for me with MWSA, and that, that's uh, Doug Grant, who was the executive director for many years, and he was kind of a role model for me through sport. And the other one was Peggy Hayes, and she was the executive director when I first started off. And, and believe it or not, when I, when I first started off, I was a, a lot smaller than I am now. <laughs> and uh, I, I hated wheelchair basketball. 
uh, I was doing all kinds of other sports. I was doing wheelchair tennis. I was doing track and field events. And I remember, I can't remember what I was in the office for, but Peggy Hayes was there and uh, she's talking to me and she's like, you know, the Alberta Northern Lights uh, put on a, a, a kids camp every summer and we're gonna send you, Joey. I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't wanna go. And she's like, no, we're gonna go. And, and you're gonna have a great time. So uh, credit to her, thanks to her, because obviously she saw something in me on the basketball court that I never truly believed in myself at that time. Uh, the next people I'd like to thank is Wheelchair Basketball Canada. I, I mean, obviously, without them and all their support uh, throughout the years, I wouldn't be here, for sure. Uh, they're great. Um, for all those years, the teammates, obviously, uh, I play a team sport, and I think I chose a team sport for a reason. Uh, to get to celebrate the successes, uh, to warn the failures, it, it always helps to have a great group of guys around with you. And I'm fortunate enough tonight, I have a couple of uh, former teammates here with me, and Richard Peter and Jamie Borisov. Uh, for, for many years, we made three-fifths of that starting lineup in Canada, and uh, for, I think it was three consecutive Paralympics, we had only lost one game, uh, and, and that's quite a feat, and I don't think many teams or programs in the world could actually match that. Uh, I'd like to thank some of my coaches as well. Uh, Joe Higgins was my first national team head coach. Uh, he's the one who actually kind of dragged me into the program as a young kid. Um, Mike Frogley is my national team coach for many years and he also coached me in, in college. And then there's Paul Bowes and Jerry Tonello who are also the head coaches with Canada for a while. Uh, I'd also like to thank my family. I mean, obviously without them I wouldn't be here. My mom and dad literally drove across the country many times to either take me to a tournament, uh, watch me play in a tournament, watch me play at a camp. Uh, my brother and sister, you know, wheelchair basketball is one of the unique sports in the world in which we have able-bodied counterparts playing alongside of people with disabilities. So I was fortunate enough to get to play a sport and share a sport with my two siblings uh, who also participated as players and both as coaches. So you know, without them, I wouldn't be here. And then of course, my lovely wife and my kids, Owen Cameron and Brody, uh, I've said this before and I truly believe it. As athletes, we get to make choices, but it's your family and friends that make the sacrifices. And if it weren't for them, the hundred million times that I spent on the road, my wife had to stay at home with the kids, um, you know, I truly would not be here without them. And so throughout my career, I was supported and encouraged by everyone I just mentioned. I will now encourage and challenge everyone else here to keep pushing forward, to keep breaking down those barriers and to help grow Parasport and push it into the mainstream. Hopefully, that will enable our next generation of Paralympic All-Stars. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Joey, on a wonderful career. Joey Johnson. This has been an incredibly special evening so far, and we're not done. But before we move into the final inductions, we will take a short break so that you can enjoy some dessert. Avant de procéder aux dernières intronisations, nous prendrons un court pause pour le dessert. We'll be back in just a moment. Thank you. Thank you for your attention as we we culminate our evening and our celebration of the class of 2019 for the Canadian Paralympic Hall of Fame. I hope you've completely enjoyed your dinner now. And we have two more extraordinary athletes to recognize and to celebrate this evening. To get going, I'd like to welcome our next presenters to the stage, past CPC president, who continues to do so much work, David Legg, and Maria Ataya from CPC Premier Partner, the Hudson's Bay Company. Please come to the stage, Maria and David. Our next inductee was a trailblazer in wheelchair rugby who helped redefine the sport throughout his two decades as a remarkable leader on the national team. Let's watch the screens now and find out more about the indelible impact Garrett Hickling has made in his career. 
At 16 years old, Garrett Hickling, an avid athlete, suffers a terrible fall. He will not walk again, but he will rock and he will roll. Driven by an unquenchable competitive fire, pioneer Duncan Campbell introduces Garrett to wheelchair rugby, a game that will make him a world champion, a Paralympic medalist, and one of the most honored competitors in the sport's history. He was aggressive, um, passionate, intense, and loved the sport at the, all at the same time, right? Just the perfect combination. We have great offensive players and great defensive players, but he'll play a game without turning the ball over, and then when you need a turnover, go get it. The first time he blasts a rival player out of his chair with a solid hit, he is hooked for life. And what a life it is. He is named most valuable player at the sport's first three world championships. Leads Canada to world championship gold in 2002. Wears the nation's colors at five Paralympic games, earning four medals on the Paralympic stage. Being the most valuable player uh, in the world three times in a row. Nobody else has even come close to that. People forget how dominant he was. Like when you say the best player to ever play the game, it's, I don't think it's even close. London, Beijing, Athens, Sydney, Atlanta. For more than 20 years, Garrett Hickling has made the rugby floor his kingdom and the world his arena. If you only knew Garrett on the court and then you got to understand how much Garrett cares for people off the court, uh, I don't know if people would find that surprising, but I think that's a really nice piece of Garrett's character. Well, there's two Garretts on the court. Um, there's fierce, intimidating uh, guys that everybody else sees, and uh, um, there's Garrett, the teammate, who's got everybody's back. If he's on your side, you're about five inches taller and about 20 pounds heavier, and if you're going against him, it's probably the opposite. Now he is sharing his experience and his expertise with a new generation of wheelchair rugby athletes, inspiring the next generation to dream big and hit hard. The easy way to say is he's the best player to ever play the game and leave it at that. But that's just, you know, 25% of what he is to wheelchair rugby. So I'm glad you're getting other people talk about him because if you had him talk about himself, it'd be the shortest video ever. Gentlemen, he promises a long speech tonight. Garrett Hickling. Wow, thank you. Um, it's tough to believe, like everyone says, you do something that you've loved for so many years and to be recognized like this is just amazing. Um, so many people I'd like to thank, but I do have to try to keep it short, but I will. Keep it small and simple. Uh, first person, Kathy Newman, um, fellow Hall, Hall of Famer. She was the one when I first got injured, she pursued me and bugged me and she had me try every sport available, uh, for track and field, to basketball, to whatever she could think of. She'd call me up, she'd have me come out and try the sport out, you know. Never, she never introduced me to rugby, but she met me to the people that turned me into the rugby, and thank you very much, Kathy. Uh, Kathy Gadu, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have probably had the 25 years of rugby. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, CPC, the amazing things that they've done over the years. To me, just makes my tattoo feel that much more important. Um, thank you very much. Fellow teammates, I've met many great guys, have many great friends over the years, and. Uh, they're almost like a second family to me. Just thank you very much. And of course, friends and family, you know. Without them and their moral support, it would just help me pull through everything. And um, thank you very much, Dad. Love you. Love you, Mom. Take care. Thank you all very much. Garrett Hickling, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations, Garrett. Wonderful, wonderful career. And what a legacy that you have at Wheelchair Rugby Canada. Now we're down to our final honoree of the evening. And uh, this is a very special. 
Please welcome our presenters, President of the Paralympic Foundation of Canada, who uh, I've had a long association with and so proud to know him, and he does so much great work. Please welcome Jim Westlake to the stage, ladies and gentlemen. And from CPC funding partner, Sport Canada, Vicki Walker. Vicki, come on up. She is one of the most prolific Canadian Paralympians on the field of play and greatest advocates off the field of play. Our next inductee has broken down barriers throughout her long and storied career. Please turn your attention to the screens to find out more about the wonderful career of the pride of Saskatchewan, Colette Bourgogne. <laughs> well, every once in a while, you get a second chance. I'm very grateful to small town Porcupine Plain, Saskatchewan, for a second chance to dream big. Colette Bagonia's motto is simple but eloquent. Sport changes life. Colette is a competitive cross-country runner out of Porcupine Plain, Saskatchewan. She has dreams of becoming a phys ed teacher, but an automobile accident leaves her with a broken back at the age of 18. The crash ends Colette's running career, but it also offers a path toward a new beginning. She was really good in, in track and field and uh, volleyball, basketball. She was, doesn't matter what she played, she was the best at it. I think she was very determined. She broke barriers, like in our province. She was the first one to go to the College of Phys Ed. They had to adapt the building for her. Colette summons the unbroken strength of her heart and her lungs to challenge the world on wheels and on skis. In 1992, a stunning double achievement first competing on snow at Albertville, France in the Paralympic Games, and then, just six months later, winning two bronze medals in Barcelona. She is competitive. Um, she works hard at it. She's got an incredible work ethic, and she's goal-oriented, so to get where she wants to go, she knows exactly what she has to do all the way along. As a person, she's, like, amazing. You know, this one individual who has so many awesome qualities, uh, wasn't hindered by a physical situation. Well, she was that rare athlete who never saw obstacles or adversities, and she was that person who only was able to seize opportunity. She did that throughout her career and was able to find a joy and an inspiration in sport that became an example for every Canadian. I'm gonna get a chance to see a real Canadian star, Colette Bourgogne, a porcupine plain Saskatchewan. 1998, Nagano, Japan. Colette claims her first sit skiing medals, a pair of silvers. To become the first Canadian to win medals at the winter and the summer Paralympics, tremendously important. No Canadian had ever done that. And she had such a long career, which spanned a generation. Big day for Colette Bourgogne. For a quarter plain. century, she dominates both disciplines competing in 10 Paralympic Games, winning 10 medals, defying time, making history as a racer, as a skier, as a coach, and as an inspiration. Proof of the power of sport to change us all for the better through all the summers and winters of our lives. She's true to herself and encourages people to be the same. Her influence went well beyond the field of play. She enlightened so many young Canadians about the joy of physical activity and what sport really can mean to a person's life. She's kind, she's considerate. Uh, she's, uh, well, she's Colette. She's like, she's one of a kind. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, she's a member of Canada's Sports Hall of Fame. She's now a member of the Canadian Paralympic Hall of Fame, Colette Bourgogne of Saskatchewan. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what a year this has been. Uh, I am uh, so, so honored 
to be put into the Paralympic Hall of Fame. Um, Canada's Sports Hall of Fame was amazing. This is, you know, definitely my family. <laughs> and uh, to be amongst the, non the athletes and the builders to see where the sport has gone since I started. <laughs> it's been a phenomenal journey that I am just so grateful to, to have been a part of and to have the support from so many areas in my life. Uh, you know, yeah, you saw my brother. Um, he loaned me the hockey equipment so I could play hockey with the boys. <laughs> that made it fun. Um, and, you know, with... Yeah, I, I, it's just, it's been so much fun, this journey, that um, it's, it's gone in so many different directions, and it's been so intensely focused. It's been supported by Pat Prokopchik, who brought the first Sitski, um, to have journeys with Chantal Petitclair, Senator Chantal Petitclair, and, you know, to have so many meet so many different people. When you come here, I'm just seeing, high, seeing all the people that I've traveled with, I've competed with, I've seen along the road of, you know, 22 years from Paralympics, uh, from 92 to 2014. Um, it's been a fantastic trip. I'm so grateful to sponsors that have sponsored the, you know, I've, I've seen, you know, gone from pain to compete for Canada to seeing how athletes are supported in all areas, in uh, the sports science, the nutrition, and all the areas that make an athlete an elite athlete. Uh, I've seen it transform from, you know, from grassroots to, to, po to, the, to the height of the Paralympic Games. So um, I really wish all the athletes that are competing in the next Paralympic Games all the best in their journey. Um, I hope they find uh, the amazing people that help you be the best you can be. To the coaches, to Nordic Canada that is uh, looking to support their athletes. The coaches that have supported me through this journey have been phenomenal. And I'm very grateful to all of them from, you know, the small town Porcupine Plain to... Uh, Robin McKeever, who is now the coach of the Paranordic program, uh, each one of them have given a different gift. Even the wax techs, you can take some some points from all the people along your journey, and uh, all of. Sometimes it's only one little thing, but it's that one little thing that makes a difference in your life that can really maybe help you focus better or um, help you get to the top of your game. So. I'm so grateful for all the people that have been in my world and uh, look forward to welcoming more. It's been uh, interesting. I do need to let you know that Saski Scheme for Disabled is developing sit skis. <laughs> so if you have any kids that need a kneeler or a sit ski, uh, <laughs> come and get my business card. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a great platform for that. <laughs> and I just thought of that, you know. Um, I, I think... Uh, as a coach, that's where I see, uh, you know, we need more young people. We need to start at the grassroots. So when, and when you, when you get them right out of, you know, from eight years old, we actually have some five-year-olds, you know, that is where you can say, hey, this is possible for you. And they can dream. They can dream big just like, like every other kid. So thank you all to the sponsors. Thanks for everybody to coming out tonight. And I hope you had a wonderful, fantastic time. It's been it's been awesome. Thanks so much. We had a great time at a dinner last night uh, to help raise funds for Canadian athletes in Saskatoon. And you were at home and you should have seen the reception she got there, matched only by the reception that she got here. One more time, Colette Bourgogne, your latest member of the Hall of Fame. What a, great, what a great pioneer in sport, Colette, uh, and so many people can learn from you. You've truly shown all of us what's possible if you dream that it's possible, and you're right.
sport changes lives. This concludes our official presentation of the 2019 Canadian Paralympic Hall of Fame at Gala. And what a remarkable event it's been. It's truly been an honor for me to be here with you. Uh, I'm very inspired by all of you and the work that you've done to put on display the best efforts of Canadians in sport. Whether it's on the field of play or whether it's behind the scenes, you make it happen. You have been incredible ambassadors for Paralympic sport in Canada and internationally throughout your careers, and you continue to do so today. Congratulations once again to all of you. You're such deserving inductees, and to everyone who has been a part of their journeys. Encore une fois, félicitations, and thank you everyone for being in the room tonight and for joining us and being a part of the celebrations. We appreciate all of your support. We encourage you to continue your mixing tonight and your mingling outside in the foyer. Uh, have a great night, and I would leave you with one thing. I started with Mandela. I'll finish with another historic figure in sport, the late Sir Roger Bannister, the first human being to break the four-minute mile barrier and he was a neurologist as well as an athlete, an academic. And he once said during the course of his career when reflecting upon uh, the importance of sport, he said, in sport there is a desire to succeed. But beyond that, and more importantly, there is a desire to find a companionship with kindred people. And tonight, and every night that you gather to celebrate these people of sport, you gather with kindred people. So congratulations to you all. Please, will our inductees and all Paralympians come up on stage for a photo after the ceremony. What a wonderful evening this has been in Vancouver. Thank you for having me here.